Showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. I want to welcome everybody out to the show today. Welcome to uh, episode 64 of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. My name is Chris Hollifield. I am the host. Thank you for joining me. Sorry for the delay in getting this uh, episode up. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. Uh, I've been fighting a bit of a chest cold, and so I've been uh, just kind of under the weather. And uh, I just got back, actually went down to the uh, Gallivan food truck Thursday and enjoyed a uh, sandwich from uh, Submarino's food truck. I don't know if you guys have uh, tried that out yet. They make some delicious sandwiches. Check them out. Uh, I know that's uh, food truck things every Thursday from, uh, I believe it's 11 to 2 down at the Gallivan Center. Couldn't recommend you uh, more to go check that out. Some great, some great food trucks here in Salt Lake City, Utah. So, as always, welcome to the show. I am saltlake.com is the uh, website for the show where you can find out all the information about this podcast. You can find out kind of about it, how it started. You can listen to all the previous episodes of the show right there online. Download them. Links to iTunes and Stitcher Radio. I'm everywhere where your favorite podcasts are. Just search for I am Salt Lake and you will find the show subscribe that way you don't miss a single episode i got some great shows in the future planned this episode though i want to talk to you a little bit about uh, this episode i sat down with uh, kobe prevailing atrocity he dropped me an email and kind of told me his story and what he is up to and all the the really cool things that he is up to uh here in the, in the city and his enthusiasm Wanted to bring him on the show and just kind of show that off a little bit. I mean, he is so busy. I mean, everything from his own clothing and jewelry line, as well as he's on the committee for uh, Salt Lake's Dark Arts Festival that we talk about in the interview, and just as well as is uh, everything else that he's uh, involved in, in uh, here in Salt Lake City, and just a really fun individual. So he is the guest on today's episode, episode 64, Kobe Prevailing Atrocity. Stay tuned for after the episode. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the uh, Mediocre radio network that the I Am Salt Lake podcast is now part of. It's a really great website, but I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about that after uh, my conversation with Kobe. So with that being said, let's jump into that conversation that I had with Kobe from Prevailing Atrocity. You're involved with a lot of projects. You, I am. You, 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 have... you got a lot of projects. Why don't you introduce yourself and... Just kind of run down the list of everything, and, and we'll we'll touch on yeah, everything yeah, again okay. during the. I mean, you you're a true Salt Lake City enthusiast. I mean, I really, am, really, yeah. So yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself and kind of what what you're involved in. Um, I'm Kobe Prevailing Atrocity. Live here in Salt Lake City, born and raised. I'm 26. I make clothing. I make jewelry. I love to go to local shows. I love to go out and have a real good time. Um, I work real hard. I have uh, three jobs right now, and I still make it out to as much as I can as well. So, so what? I mean, what you, you said you make clothing as well as jewelry. Mm-hmm. I saw your Etsy site with your yeah. with your jewelry. What what cloth, kind of clothing do you make? Mostly, it's been a you, lot of mostly women's clothing. Mostly that's, women's clothing. That's easier for me. Okay. Okay. Do, and, you, do you sell it then as well? Or yes. No? Yeah, no. I sell it. I have a good stash of it. I need to list still. Um, and I, how I started making clothing was I would go to thrift stores. I still do all the time. Yeah. And I just started accumulating fabric like okay. crazy, like, you know, vintage prints. And I was like, okay, I need to do something mm-hmm. with this fabric. Yeah. Because I'm just becoming a hoarder. Well, so. n- nothing wrong with being a hoarder, though, right? <laughs> Yeah. So I began, you know, I'm looking into working my mom's sewing machine and she taught me a few techniques, a few tricks. And I just, you know, I've always really been interested in fashion and mm-hmm. clothing. And so that's just, you know, how I got started with okay. kind of the whole prevailing atrocity idea. So yeah, how long is prevailing atrocity? How long has that been around? When, um, when did I've you start been, that up? kind of been doing um, my own thing for years. Um, prevailing atrocity, I think formally began... Uh, 2008. Okay. I used to go buy Coma Clothing, 
but there was a whole like thing and I was like over it. So <laughs> you yeah. were over kind of, um, the format that I had the logo in wasn't fitting in, you know, certain formats online like Etsy and Facebook. It wasn't appearing how I wanted it to. Uh-huh. I kind of was like, okay, I need to, you know, take this, you know, focus in a new direction. So I kind of, you know, ditched the name and, you know, started fresh. So started fresh and, yeah. and it's with, you, with the intent to uh, make things to sell. Do you do it by yourself or do you have anybody help you? Um, or? My mom taught me a few things, but everything that I do, that I, you know, I bring to Salt Lake, I do on my own. It's just me. And do you just sell on Etsy or any local stores? Um, or? I have been in local stores before, not currently now. I'm looking into a couple different ones, though. Making jewelry and making clothing. I mean, what's what's so, like the most rewarding thing for you for doing that? I mean, what do you um, like about it the most? It's going to be really self-indulgent. The reputation. The reputation. Knowing that. Um, having people know that I make things and okay. when I see people wearing my things, uh-huh. it's really exciting. I just, there's something about, you know, for me, I work a lot. And so jewelry is what I do in my spare time to yeah, yeah. relax and unwind and have a good time. And, you know, just to see someone in, love your hobby uh-huh. and have it be, you know, somewhat lucrative is really nice too. Yeah. As long as you're enjoying it, I yes. think that's the most important. Do you do any of the local, uh, like craft Sabbath or craft Lake city or any of that kind of stuff? Not yet. Cause I'm always working. <laughs> you're, you're always working. Yeah. Right? I have Keep... never actually been to craft Sabbath yet. So you should check it out. It's a, yeah. it's a fun, I think, what is it? The first Sunday in every month, every month at the downtown right. library. Awesome. Well, definitely I'm going to put, I'll put the link, uh, of your Etsy. Do you have a website or is it, just I do. I have an Etsy page. Okay. You can I'll look under Prevailing Atrocity. Okay. That's my username, as well as on Facebook. Okay. Okay, so jewelry and, cl- and clothing, and, yes. and I'll put the links up on the uh, I Am Salt Lake uh, show notes. You're also part of the committee for the um, Dark Arts Festival. Yes. We were talking about that before we started recording. W- what is that? I mean, so I'm the, not familiar with that whole scene. The so. Dark Arts Festival um, is held every year in June. It started 2001. Okay. Um, and why it was started was because um, there was a certain style of artist – um, that would submit to the arts festival every year and they were never accepted because their material was considered too, too and, and when you talk about the arts festival, you just talk about the main Utah arts yes. festival that goes on like in mm-hmm. June or something like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So, um, these artists would, um, submit to the arts festival to be shown and they would never get accepted to show their work. Yeah. So rather than, you know, sit around and pout, they decided to, um, have their own arts festival. So it's not, and who's who's they? Just I guess the people who started it, the founders. Or, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you know who they are? Or? DJ Evil K is okay. um, been a, a core member of that group. Uh-huh. Yeah, a lot of people who a lot of people regularly come, come you know come go. through Area Fifty. Yeah, right now the. Um, and the, is that where it's at? It's at Area Fifty One. Yes. Is that? Uh huh. Yeah. It used to, when it started. It used to be at Sanctuary, which closed. I remember Sanctuary. Then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was fourteen the first time I went there. Yeah. It started. I used to go to Kilby Court. Just yeah. right. Yeah. You know, they had like a fence that split them and yeah, so it was just right there. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So it started in 2001. It goes on for a couple of days, right? It's the, um, the three fresh. days long. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And do band, I think bands, I, I saw bands some more bands play. And there's a fashion show that I do, which is how I kind of got started with oh, okay. working with them was I submitted for the fashion show back in 2006. So, so as part of the committee, I mean, what are some of the roles that you play then? What are um, some I of the really you want get, you to, to well, um, as a committee member myself, I want to get the word out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let people know what's going on. Let pe- um, I think for a long time there was this unintentional kind of you're not invited uh-huh. vibe. And I always just invite myself to everything. So yeah, you just get out there and yeah. have fun. And so I, I really want to break down that that barrier that some people seem to have about it. It's you know it's it's an arts festival. There's photography that's on display. There's performance art. A friend and I dance on stage as the darling duo. We just kind of get on stage and act a fool and yeah. have a real good time. Yeah, and then you're having a fundraiser for that. Yes. That is in, you said May 11th. May right? 11th, yes. And where is that going to be? It's be held at Area 51. Area 51, and talk a little bit, I mean, what's what's the fe- So the we had our first fundraiser last month. It was a bake sale. It was uh-huh. very successful. Um, we're looking to do a bake sale and raffle this time. So Race. area, what day of the week is that? May 11th? It's going to be a Saturday evening. Saturday evening mm-hmm. and and then come down and it'll be a bake sale at Area 51. Yeah. So you can dance and get banana bread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. And eat banana bread while you're drinking some beverages. And mm-hmm. and then that goes towards the, um, how many people are part of like 
help organize the dark arts festival? Um, I, Any idea how many people? Right now, it's about six people, about six including people. myself. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we um, right now we're getting funds to um, we're raising funds to you know hold the festival, get bands in here, as well as um, get some local bands playing that you know play every year that are really great. And what about like if you're an artist or if you mentioned photographer, like if somebody wants to submit to the um, the submission page is still open. Okay. It's um, darkartsfestival dot org. Of something like that. I'll get yeah. the I'll get the correct we'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll put the correct link on the uh So submissions are still open until um the beginning of May. Beginning so, of May. Yeah. Well it's kinda kinda short, I guess, but so kinda kinda <laughs> coming up here, hopefully. Well this, if yeah, this... if you wanna, you know, check it out this year and then maybe submit for next year. You know, they do it every year. So every, that's yeah, two thousand one, two thousand thirteen. So about twelve years now. It's mm-hmm. been and it's yeah. it's been pretty successful. A lot of people come out to it and Yes, it's not it used to be much bigger. They used to get bigger bands, but and then, you know, the economic blah 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 happened. And, you know, the bands aren't touring as often or uh-huh. they, you know, require a higher fee, which, you know, Dark Arts is a nonprofit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they'll, they pay, you know, they'll try to pay something, but it's pretty minimal. So, yeah. And what about, I mean, what if, if somebody wants to volunteer at all? I'm sure they could reach out as well. Absolutely. As a, yeah. There a is a group on Facebook for Dark Arts Festival. They can make any inquiries there. Um, and if you see me around, you know, let me know what's up and I'll, you know, I'll let you know what's up. Yeah. And, and I'm not responsible for volunteers, but I can get them in touch with the person responsible. So the person, if someone wants to come help out, you know, we can always use an extra pair of hands. Yeah. And you also uh, mentioned that you work with, how do you pronounce it? Bedlam Follies? Bedlam or? Follies. Yes. Yeah. What is, what's that? All They're about? a dance troupe. Uh, I've emceed for them before um they've had a few shows they will be performing at dark arts um, as well lovely group of ladies just dance like what kind of dance i mean um performance art dance performance Mm -hmm. choreographed how many of them are there um May, approximately I'm just five curious, or six just curious. okay okay five or six five or six ladies yeah um the the last the show before the last one was this idea of a haunted phonograph mm. so all the dances were kind of this story of this haunted record player and they did a big finale at the end with guest dancers on the stage with them and it was about an hour and a half show with an intermission wow so it was, and there are so many cool things going on here in yeah, Salt Lake, there is. right? We're so, very so you you occasionally MC for them, and, yes. and and do that. I mean, obviously you have a good time doing it, or, I you, do. or, you, or you wouldn't do it. You, what? I mean, you stay busy. So, what motivates you to stay to keep so busy? What, like, I mean, honestly. Well, it, it, well I what motivates me to stay. I just love going out. I love what everything that Salt Lake has to offer. The yeah. when I when I know something's going on. Oh, well, what really got me kind of promoting was that I would go to shows and there wasn't a whole lot of people there. Yeah. And they, you know, I would talk about it and um, people would go, Oh, I didn't hear about it. Oh, you, oh, you should let me know. Uh-huh. So that's kind of what motivated me to get started. Yeah. You know, letting people know what's up. Like, Hey, this awesome thing is going on. You should be part of it. So it's, it's probably pretty safe to say you love Salt Lake. I yes, mean, you, absolutely. you love, what are some of your favorite things besides obviously the things you mentioned? What are some of your other favorite things about Salt Lake in general? I mean, what, what do you like about it? What do you, <laughs> I, I, I love getting out there and meeting new people and, you know, finding how they came to be in Salt Lake. If they're not from here, if they're from here, you know, everyone has a really great background story about how they're here, whether they were born and raised or they came from, you know, out of town or whatever. You so, know. And you were born and raised in Salt Lake. Yes. You, you've lived here your whole life. Mm-hmm. I mean, have you ever thought at all, I'm going to move away. Um, I've, I've I mean, always sure told, yeah. I've always told myself if I was going to move away, it'd be for a job or for school. Yeah. I've never had the desire to move away because, you know, I hate Salt Lake and blah, 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 because everywhere has their hangups. Yeah. Yeah. I really like Salt Lake. I think a lot of it is finding where you fit and being authentic about who you are. What do you think of the, I mean, there is such, I find it a lot. There's such a negative vibe so often. Uh, towards Salt Lake, you know, people are like, "Oh, this the city, you know, it's got this and this wrong with it, and this and this." But then you find they're not doing anything to change it. I mean, do you, do you find that at all being out and about? At all? I, I do. I, I see it. I was just curious if I, I was do. the only one who saw that. I really don't pay much attention to that though, because yeah. I'm just like, well, you know, every, you know, like I said, every city has their hangups. Yeah. What I like, I, I choose to focus on the positive and you know being a positive influence in Salt Lake and. You know, that's where I put my focus. So everywhere, you know, there's always going to be those people who have something bad to say about everything. Yeah. I'm not one of those people. Well, you don't seem like it. You seem (laughs) to And one thing I notice maybe helps you out is by staying so busy. 
you know, yes. with, with keeping with your projects and, and, yeah. and, and, and everything you, do you have any like favorite local restaurants that you like oh, or little lo- <laughs> local eating establishments? Yeah, I do. I'm always curious for my own recommendations. Um, you know? I, um, I went to Coco Kitchen the other day or so one of my favorites. Not, not from Taco. What, what is that? Plan? Um, it's, um, homemade Japanese food. Really? It's like what, you know, it's, from what I've heard, it's what Japanese people eat at home. It's not a version of you know a restaurant kind of, it's like cafeteria style seating you you know go up and order and it's really good um what, I also, what did you what did, i'm curious I about this. The, i haven't been there yet i'm <laughs> curious now my favorite thing to get is the potato curry croquettes okay it comes okay. with this really great sauce you put on top and it's just yeah. super good uh also the spam rice balls and, and where's where's this place at where's um it's 700 south and about 300 east. Okay. It's just right down the street from the downtown DI. Okay. okay. So I'll, you know, usually what kind of what I like to do is I will call an order in at Coco Kitchen mm-hmm. um, and go, leave my house or leave work a little early so I can swing by DI to kind of peruse what's going on there. Yeah, yeah. And then swing by Coco Kitchen to pick up my order. And then you got to go to the other DI down 800 south. Do you, do, you, do you ever go to that DI too or no? No, uh-uh. I haven't you, been to that one. You never, you never? I, my friend told me that I should check it out for like, they have really great dishes. Yeah, yeah. Really, they got, yeah. Well, I find a lot of great clothes at that Yeah, DI. and I hit every thrift store in Salt Lake. There's a lot of great ones yeah. in Salt Lake. And uh, you find the most bizarre things, yeah. like wonderfully bizarre things. What's, what's your favorite find at a thrift uh, store? I regularly look for, um, men's or women's shoes in my size, huh. um, or vintage glass. Yeah. Like, um. Do you collect Pyrex? Candy dishes. Pyrex dishes. No, I don't. You're not. You're not one I, of those Pyrex dishes no. collectors. I like I like vintage um, candy dish that are like pedestal and intricate and lidded dishes. I you know like sugar dishes. I mm. find really intriguing or bizarre wall hangings. I really like. And do you uh, just kind of keep them for yourself, or do you resell them online? Um, I res- I sell it off and on. That's yeah, not yeah, my yeah. focus. When I go looking for, I look for things that I like. Yeah. But I've 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 sold a few things. You know. You know. Turned that trick one a couple of times. So let's say somebody was listening, and they were occasional. I'll get people that listen that are visit going to visit Salt Lake, uh-huh. right? Okay. Say they had like a day to visit here. I mean, what is. What is something you would say you got to check this out? Oh, that's or like hard. a bar maybe <laughs> or so what what's you know maybe you oh you got to go to this bar I or this really club. enjoy Burt's Tiki Lounge. Isn't that, that place great? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually how I found this podcast. Yeah. Was uh, I was looking for shows to repost on Salt Lake City Psychobilly, which is a page that I admin for. Yeah. And I was looking um looking for shows coming up that I could promote for them. Uh-huh. And it um I found this podcast by searching for Burt's okay. for shows at Burt's. Like on Google? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. and then you, you so you saw the interview I did with Germ then uh, yeah. with with Bert's. That's a great place. That was it, yeah. It really, I really, if, um, I, I'm really weird. Like when I you know say for, like, when I look on Yelp for uh, restaurants, uh-huh. I, you know I just want to go to a place that has like really negative comments about it and then check <laughs> it out because my taste is really really different from most people's. I think because I I'm not your typical oh you have to go see this see that. Uh-huh. I wanted to you know. If someone were to come into town, I would be like, hey, let's go to Burt's and, you know, get Wasty Phase and take tracks home or something. Yeah. Or um, let's go thrift shopping. Yeah. That to me is a real fun time. Um, I work at Red Butte Garden as well. Oh, wow. I've been there for almost 10 years. What do you do there? Um, front desk. Front desk. Membership database stuff and that kind of stuff. So we're getting ready to um, sell our tickets for this season. For the for the concerts. Mm-hmm. For- yeah. So, um, you know, I would take them up to Red Butte, have a nice picnic, overlook the valley. That, to it's me, beautiful up there. Yeah. Getting up there is a great time. Wow. That'd be a great job. What, yeah. are, what are some of the... Uh- shows or concerts musicians that you're looking forward to uh, um I'm, I'm i work most of the shows but i'm gonna be attending um pink martini and david byrne i want to go isn't she, i think she and him are playing up yes there, right? like, uh-huh. i love i love 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 yeah. that man there and they, yeah the, every year they've been getting um w- a, willie nelson lineup. is playing up there yeah I think. um who is playing um Merle Haggard. Is it Merle Haggard? <laughs> no. Yeah, I think Merle Haggard might be. John yeah. Prine, I know, is playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great, uh, great outdoor. I think George concert. Thorogood is coming. Yeah. I just glimpsed at the lineup. I Yeah, I just seen, you know, Pink Martini was coming and the uh, Bird, and I was like, ah. You got to go. Yeah, have you to gotta, go. You got to go. Yeah. Man, I need to get hooked up with, with, with <laughs> that job. Is there anything about Salt Lake that you would change at, or or – you know, anything that you would like to see different? Um, I think, you know, being 
in the community and being part of the change, I'm taking it that direction anyway. Uh-huh. Like I said before, I don't really look at the bad side. I just see Salt Lake overall is improving everywhere. It's <laughs> it's it's coming together. I mean, it really is um, becoming its own unique city. Not that it wasn't before, but I think it people here are finally getting out and creating. I don't know if I just see that because of what I'm doing with the podcast or I'm just connected to more people again because of the, of this show, but it just seems like everybody here wants to make Salt Lake City a badass city to live in. I, I completely agree. You yeah. Know. I think the, the change that I want to see were, you know, people like you and I were doing it. Yeah. People who've been yeah. on the podcast, they're doing it. Yeah. So. Well, no, and that's what's great. I mean, I, I definitely um, am so glad because especially with everything you're doing, I'm glad you reached out to me <laughs> to come on the show because I want to show people like yourself that are so active in the community, show off their life a little bit and say, you know what? Get off the couch, stop watching really shitty sitcoms all night <laughs> yeah. and get involved in Salt Lake City. You you mentioned, uh, I know you mentioned in your message to me and then you mentioned it again, you're the admin for the Salt Lake City uh, Psycho Billy. Yes. What, just like the page on Facebook? Or, uh-huh, yeah. And what, page on what do you guys do on there? Um, I mean, we just promote shows coming in. Every Psycho Billy, Rocky Billy show, borderline old country will mm. promote. So, if, you know, if you're a band or, you know, if you just want to know what's going on in that, you know, aspect, um, like us on Facebook, stay updated. Yeah. We'll post, um, uh, mostly it's just, you know, concert, you know, concerts coming through. We'll post like, um, video clips of psych, you know, pertaining to psychobilly, rockabilly lifestyle, which I really enjoy. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a rockabilly person, mm. but there's many aspects that I enjoy. It's yeah. mostly the music. What, who are some of your favorite bands? Um, I Billy. love Blooming Bombers as well as, um, the, um, what is it? Ugly Valley Boys they played at Devil's Daughter last Oh, yeah, yeah. Great local band. Yeah. Great local mm-hmm. band. I don't know if they, they kind of fit in that parameter, but yeah. I, I consider them too. And they're, they're wonderful. They got that old time yeah. feel to them. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, what's his, he has that barbershop. One of the guys from, yeah, the, Braxton has Braxton. Braxton's barbershop. You ever go in there? I've never been there. <laughs> I've always wanted to go in there and get like one of those shaves, you know, yeah. with the straight <laughs> razor. Or, you know, and in, in, in the old fashioned. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just, you know, a man's barbershop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. <laughs> Which I, is really appealing. But I, yeah, my friend does my hair. So, your, your friend, <laughs> yeah. Does she, do they have a shop or? or? No, just no. In their just, kitchen. <laughs> just in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just curious, you know, give him a plug, give him a, a, a shout out. So, what other hobbies and interests uh, do, does Kobe have? Just share a little bit about, uh, or I mean, you pretty much have covered all of. Yeah, I like. I love to collect records. My um, if I get a day off, which is really rare, I like you know I like to be at home listening to records. Just any kind of records. Yeah, or? well, um, like big band is kind of what I enjoy the most. Yeah. Like I mean, or like Loretta Lynn. Yes, just Johnny Cash or something. Whatever. What, yeah. Do you have any favorite record Tammy stores Wynette. in town? Do you, um, or do you find no. it mostly at DI? I, I, um, Randy's Records is really great. Um, Graywell's pretty rad because they'll have like, oh, this, you know, crate of, you know, records is like a dollar each. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I will take all of them. <laughs> what, what about eight tracks? I found an eight track player one time that worked and I was pretty stoked on that. And my brother has an eight track. Yeah, yeah, player. yeah. And I was just he like, has like 10 of the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're great because they're like 25 cents, you know, and yeah. so it's like you can't really go wrong. It's like, okay, this sounds like shit and just throw it out if you don't mm-hmm. want it, you know, keep it. But there's just something nostalgic about it, you know. It's funny the amount of people, you know, we're talking about records here, the amount of people uh, with Record Store Day here just just recently, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the amount of pe- yeah, yeah, yesterday. What's a record, you know, or something, you know, I, I, I know most people were kidding, but there's a lot of people that aren't even familiar with CDs. You know, a lot of this generation, yeah. uh, we're so used to downloading music, music mm-hmm. so accessible. There's something about that search. Do you get a little bit of a rush when you're searching through records yeah, a little bit? I do. Yeah. And I can just, I, I love the look of it. I love holding up to the light to see if there's any scratches. There's almost like there's this ritual yeah, yeah. To, to having or looking for records. Yeah. And I think. I know, that's what I like a what ritual. I, what do you mean by that? Like what? Yeah, how I open it up, yeah. uh, how I slide it out, how I hold it up to the light yeah. to examine it um, before you play it. You know, you got to wipe it off. Wow, so you yeah. really do get into it. Yeah, then. you're not just mm-hmm. one of those people. Okay, let's get some records and then no. pull pull it out to impress your friends. You no. really like kind of like uh, you seen the movie High Fidelity. Yes. With oh, the, yeah. is that how your record collection is? <laughs> no, it's not that. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a that, that would yeah. That's I think a, probably always, have around. 
50. Okay, okay, that's, so that's fair enough. Better. Decent. I used to have a lot of records, but then my record player broke. And, oh, no, and the worst. it is, it really is. But as I move around so much, I find it so much easier just to have it in MP3 format. There's yeah, something. Even books, yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't that sad? Even books are kind of going out. It's like. Yeah, there, I, I moved re- uh, a few times in the past little bit, and I still can't ditch my books. Yeah. I can't. I've, I mean, I've let a few go, but there's, you know, that's, you know, kind of the same nostalgic um, method or mm. ritual about books. You, re- then, you, re- you read a lot of books? Um, or, not, or not, not, not as not much anymore. as you should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's how when I When I was in school, I used to read pretty yeah. frequently. Yeah. I think my favorite book is Night. Okay. okay. I, I can read that all day, any day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you have one of those, uh, like, Kindle readers. I that, don't. Yeah, I don't either. I, I can't. No, I'm I'm too much of an old lady to have that kind of stuff. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, which, like, do you have any favorite movies or anything? What's your favorite My movie? My favorite movie is Rebel Without a Cause. Oh, that's, yeah, I saw yeah. that. That's, that is a good movie. Um, Mommy Dearest is just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lost Boys. Oh, it's that's really a, great. What do you think of Lost Boys 2? Did you like I that? I didn't see it. You didn't see that one? No, no, no. no. You into uh, any any new new movies that you've really liked that no, came I out? I haven't seen any movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's good though. That means you're that means you're keeping busy with all your other yeah, projects. I, you know what I mean? A lot of times people go to the movie theater is a like kind of like okay, let's just go here out of boredom, you know? And, yeah, and you stay so busy. I have a handful of friends who you know who do go to movies regularly, and yeah, I, you know, there's I don't know. I'm just so active in doing everything. Um, I feel like just sitting there in a theater checking on eight dollar soda. Is and just sitting there. I feel well, you got to like, sneak the like soda I'm... in, you know, or sneak the candy in. <laughs> yeah, you know, open up your tall boy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I feel so unproductive. Yeah, I feel like I could be doing something. It, it, do you get that? I get that way a lot. You know, yeah, like at night I, I get kind of stir crazy. I'm like, okay, I should be spending my time yes. better than how I'm spending it. Do you kick yourself a lot for for wasting time? I do. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I kick myself when I there's so many things going on and I kind of overbook and I can't make it to certain things and it's just like, oh, I should have gone here, but I'm over here. But here's really great too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how. Yeah, that's how I get. That's yeah. how I get. What's your What's your uh, favorite song? Like, say when you're driving in your car by yourself to just sit, belt out and sing. Do you have like a favorite song, a guilty pleasure song? A guilty pleasure song. I am. Um, I think my biggest guilty pleasure song is the song Barbie Girl by Aqua. Okay, that's a good um, one. And I'll actually change the words. So instead of Barbie Girl, it's um. How do I sing it? I'm a Kobe girl or something. Yeah. I, I work my name into songs a lot just because I'm really self indulgent like that. I love it. <laughs> I, I love. I love the honesty. Let's say you found out that you had six months to live. How would you spend your time? Oh, it's such a deep question, right? Yeah. After all those fun ones. Um, I would keep working because I love what I do. I I work for Art Ticks as well. Um, <laughs> you, yeah, it's, it's like it's just the spout of of all of, this awesomeness, of right? Work, yeah. So Art Ticks, what do you do for Art Ticks? I'm a box office supervisor there. Um, so I facilitate the sales for shows coming through, like at Capitol Theater, of Ravenel Hall, and Rose Wagner. Mm. So. Yeah, I really like. I, I'm kind of the new kid over there still. I started uh, in November. You know, I had uh, have supervisor experience and ticketing experience for, through Red Butte. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah that and hired me on, and so now I, I'm even even more active now that I know. Yeah. You know, all these great shows are coming through. So. Well, do you got any secret shows that you're not supposed to talk about? No, you, you probably, I wish. Probably, yeah. <laughs> we just sell tickets for things already on sale. So yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, you don't I'm get... not that deep into it yet. Well, what I'm curious about is it seems like you have more hours in the day than most of us. How do you, I mean, come on. You, you just keep spouting these things like that you do. Like, <laughs> how do you find time in the day? It just it, you, you probably don't sleep a lot at night. No, I don't. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Four to six hours of sleep every A lot day. of rock star energy drinks. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Lots of green tea. I, I, I would agree with that. I feel like I, you know, because when someone talks to me about, oh, I had a long week, I worked 40 hours, I think, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't really share that, but I think, you know, oh, that's, you know, three days of work for me. Wow. Like, you know, Friday night, I think I worked 14 hours. What? And then um, the Saturday, I worked like 11 hours. And then I went out the, you know, that night, you know? Yeah, but you live, that's what I love about it. Again, that's what I'm trying to, sh- you know, I think this e- episode hopefully will portray the most of how fulfilling an active lifestyle can yeah. be. I mean, do you, you probably feel fulfilled, right? I mean, yes, you, you I feel, do. I you feel, you feel that way. Yeah. yeah. I'm well, always on the go. I'm always going somewhere. Let, so let's say somebody who's listening, who's like, 
I, I want to, you know, get get involved with something. I mean, what would you? How would you recommend them to get involved? Um, feel free to add just, me. Yeah, on just, Facebook myself. Okay. I'm, you know, pretty friendly guy. So, so uh, do you care if I add your link onto the show oh, notes absolutely. for for your for your Facebook? Feel so, free. Yeah, yeah, excellent. And then say, how can I get involved, Kobe? How? What, I'm what always, events? Yeah, I'm always posting everything that I do. Uh-huh. I, I post about it. Yeah, because why not? Yeah, and I think one of the one of the hardest parts is getting started. And just going. Yeah. Because, um, you know, there, there are shows where I don't know anybody, but I'm having a real good time. And I think just there's something about our culture that's just, oh, I have to know people there. And I have to – part of it is like this social media me now kind of thing. Yeah. And I think once you get past that of, you know – because I know how that is with me. Like, it's like, well, I won't know anybody there. And, uh-huh. you know, I'll be the kid in the corner by myself or something. <laughs> Come like find that. me. We'll talk, you know, we'll talk smack on somebody. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'll, you know, now, yeah, absolutely. That's what yeah. I love about doing this show even is like hopefully even creating a, 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 a friendship, you know, of course. and, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, get to know. Uh, yeah. Like, everybody. you know, once you start going to shows, you're going to see people, you're going to yeah. say, hey, I, you know, see you around. You look really cool. That's, yeah. you know, that's how friendships start absolutely one of my closest friends i am um, i i really like all her tattoos and i loved her big hair and i went right up to her and i said darling you look fucking amazing yeah i was like you know and then she's like well thanks let me buy you a drink and you, you, you know? didn't even know this no. girl you just boom went up to her it's, and yeah because i was you know all done up myself and i really appreciate when people you yeah. know actually put effort into how they look yeah you know because it's like you're going out you gotta look the part you know yeah so I just, oh, I hate that. Like when people, when you go, when you go out to somewhere and yeah. you know, you get, you get, you get dressed up and you're so overdressed, you're so overdone because everyone else is in sweatpants <laughs> or, you know, you know, um, gym shorts or it's like, what is going on? Like, well, you, but then at least, know? you know, you'll look the best, you know, there, you, yeah. you, you know, you look the best. <laughs> One of the best. So if you go out, you know, put a little effort into your, you know, your outfit. Absolutely. Well, again, you know, I appreciate it. Let's, I'll put all the links to get in touch so people can get in touch with you. The yeah, yeah. Uh, Prevailing Atrocity, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So there's my personal page, which is Kobe Prevailing Atrocity. Okay. There is my clothing and jewelry site for on Facebook, which is um, Prevailing Atrocity Clothing. Mm. There, I, I admin for Salt Lake City Psychobilly, mm. which is a page you can like on Facebook. Um, there is a group on Facebook for Dark Arts Festival that you, um, anyone, it's an open, I think you have to, like, you have to ask to be, to join, but yeah. we add everyone yeah, to request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And then, and then the website for, for, for the Dark Arts Fe- Festival I'll have on the website too, mm-hmm. so people can get yes. into that. You know what? I'm going to ask you if you, if it, sometime in the next little while, if you can send me over some of those links. Yeah, absolutely. That way, that way I don't have to spend too, too much time <laughs> yeah, looking I, for yeah, them, I can do you that. know, that's um, no problem. I'm sure you know most of the links. Anything else you want to add? Any, any events, other events, the May 11th fundraiser at Area 51. Let's not yes. forget about that. Go out and support that. Come on over. Get you, you know, get you a brownie, get you a beer. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. they probably won't be the good brownies, but well, they'll yeah. be decent, but not the best kind. Yeah. The best kind, the best, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> Get in touch with Kobe. Yeah, let, you, you know, know I there's so much going on in Salt Lake. There's no reason to stay in. What are you? What other things are you excited about this summer? I mean, summer's right around the corner. It maybe. is. Um, do you go down to Farmers Market much downtown? I do. Yeah, isn't that yeah. great? Uh huh. Yeah. I, I love the I love they extended their hours last year. Yeah. Because I would be like, oh, I gotta get up. Oh, I gotta get down there. They're closed. They so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're staying later. And then um, Carlucci's is just right across. From the park, which is great. The, what, the, the Carlucci's is a restaurant. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, delicious. They have a really great sandwich that I really like. Uh, so, uh, do you do Twitter at all? Are you on Twitter? No, I'm not on Twitter. You gotta I, get on Twitter. Uh, I, I this is really weird. I really dig Facebook because I can, you know, post about my life and all this, you know, crazy. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like I have nothing to say on Twitter. I know yeah. that's really bizarre, but. Well, you can say the same thing about it as like on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm just, yeah. I'm a Twitter nut. I love Twitter. I, I have been thinking about it. Maybe you'll be like one of my first, fo- I'll follow you first or something if I join. I don't know. That would be but, exciting. Yeah, I'll be, just, I'll be love, your first. I love to just rant on Facebook about being, you know, Salt yeah. Lake's worst mom and, you know, <laughs> single mom and, you know, my kids getting taken away from me and... <laughs> I love that, like, you know, because I am a public figure, I love to just post really, you know, authentic things about shows coming up and uh, um, insights I have on life or whatever. But I feel like I sometimes I get too serious. And so I have to kind of blur the lines of reality and kind of just post nonsensical, yeah. you know, 
my wick ran out or something or what do you think about all the negative people on facebook i mean i wish i had free time like they did to be yeah. negative yeah i bet you're just like what what are, what are you doing you yeah know? like i i just don't feed the trolls yeah like yeah. you know let them because like you're if you start attracting that it's hard to stop it. it's hard to because these people are looking for their energy suckers yeah yeah and if they can leech onto you they will and they won't let go and then all of a sudden you're in this, you know, heap of just negativity. Yeah. But if you just never allow that in your life, there's, you, they're, they're going to move on. They're yeah. going to, they'll, they'll get I'm bored sure, of Facebook yeah, or something. I'm sure there's a handful of people who I, you know, who, who see me, who just can't stand me. I just let them be. They let yeah. me be like, I have nothing to say to them. They have nothing to say to me. So. But sometimes that's the best thing. Cause it drives you. I know it does for me where it's like, that makes me just want to do more. Yes. Cause it's just like haters may out glamor them. Yeah. <laughs> just exactly. be a better person all over. Exactly. Always. Exactly. Well, any final words you want to end the, in the show with? I mean, anything else you want to add um, uh, before get we get out there? Don't be afraid to just yeah. go. Uh, don't be afraid to go alone. You know, yeah. um, let's be, you know, let's be, let's be a community. I but, love it. You know, it starts with one person going out. And then once you start going out, you're going to keep going out and, you know, build our community, which is what I want to do. And everyone who I roll with has the same, you know, idea and goal. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you're definitely a, a, a perfect person to uh, have on the show. <laughs> thank I mean, you. I'm so excited that I was able to be yeah, part of this. It's really yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll catch up down the road and, and uh, with some of your pr- projects and then, you know, we'll once we get the dates for the dark arts yeah. fest, I'll, I'll announce them on a, on, on a future episode of the podcast. So thank you very much, Kobe. Thank you. Many thanks goes out to uh, Kobe prevailing atrocity for coming on the show, coming on the podcast and sharing his enthusiasm and everything that he is involved in here in the Salt Lake city area. It's kind of what I want to showcase a little bit with the show is just showing off the people like Kobe just average everyday people that are making the city tick, making it what it is today and what they are doing to get involved in hopefully inspiring people like you, the listener, to get out and do something and make the city just a little bit better to live in. So thank you very much, for Kobe, for coming on the show and sharing everything that you're involved in. You were a very inspirational person to have on the show. Again, the website, IamSaltLake.com, is how you can get in touch. We are on iTunes, Stitcher Radio. We're on the Zoom network for the people with the Windows phones. And uh, yeah, everywhere where you can pretty much find podcasts, the I Am Salt Lake podcast is there. Like I mentioned, the I Am Salt Lake podcast is now part of the um, Mediocre Radio Network, which you can find that at MediocreRadioNetwork.com. A lot of really great shows on the uh, network there, the Mediocre Show. Obviously oblivious, full of Sith. Welcome to that whole thing. The Big Shiny Robot, Big Movie Mouth Off, South Philly, Paul Cast, and see you next Tuesday. All part of that great network of some amazing podcasters. Very, uh, very excited to be part of such a great team of uh, podcasts. You can listen to it right online with any, uh, any, your iPhone, your smartphone. You can listen to it online. Everything is there for you to listen in all of the information, as well as all the previous uh, episodes of those shows. And I cannot urge you enough to support those shows, subscribe to them. Check them out. Tell them you heard about them from the I Am Salt Lake podcast and uh, you are listening to them through the Mediocre Radio Network. Again, that's MediocreRadioNetwork.com. I know the Mediocre Radio Network has a Facebook page as well as Twitter page. I'm going to eventually have all of those links up at IamSaltLake.com where you can uh, connect with all of it and, and just uh, just connect with everybody and we'll all become one big happy family. Uh, like I said, I am here a couple times a week, usually Sunday and Wednesday, and uh, with a brand new episode showcasing an individual in Salt Lake or an event that I believe is making Salt Lake City just a little bit better to live in. The voicemail line is 385-202-5926. Give me a call with any upcoming events that you want me to possibly play on the show. Drop me an email if you want to come on the show. I am Salt Lake at gmail.com is the uh, email. I also love to hear from my listeners. There also will be soon an events page on the I Am Salt Lake website. Kind of some different things that are going on here in Salt Lake City. As we gear closer to summertime, there's a lot going on and there's a lot that I'll be doing. And so I want you to come out and have uh, some fun and enjoy Salt Lake City. A lot of really fun stuff. 
I'm also on Facebook and Twitter, facebook.com slash I am Salt Lake and Twitter. It's just twitter.com slash I am Salt Lake. Follow me on there for up to date information about the podcast as well as Salt Lake City. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the I am Salt Lake podcast. I, uh, I'll be back on Sunday with a new episode. Thank you so much for listening and for all of your support. Mm-hmm.